Good evening to our beautiful listeners and our followers this evening. I am your girl. That's right. Deshaun Antoinette Booker, your maximizing coach. And I am so excited for another episode of the Yummy Cap. Hey, Y-U-M-M-E, Your Unlimited Magnificence. It is so great to be here with you for another exciting chit chat with our phenomenal, phenomenal guest this evening. But before we get started, I'm going to introduce myself to you. If you don't know, I am Deshaun Antoinette Booker and I am your maximizing coach. And so, you know, this is what I do. Let me tell you what I do. What I simply do is I hold a space for powerhouse women to show up in their three eyes. I want women who are out there, who know that they're powerful, who's looking for the great thing to do in their lives to leverage their three eyes. Deshaun, what are the three eyes? Well, I'll tell you. The three eyes are being intentional, living and working from a place of integrity so you can manifest increase in every area of your life. Doesn't that sound like just phenomenal? And you know what? It's tangible. It's real. And so I hold that space for women so that they are able to reach their highest potential and really max out their professional and personal life in every area they desire. And I've always wanted to do that for myself. So I want to hold a space for women to do that as well. And in doing so, I'm the founder and creator of the Magnificence Formula. Now, this formula is true and is time tested, okay? Because I have lived it and I understand what it means to really be able to push through the barriers. And so I created the Magnificence Formula. That formula is designed to actually assist women, to help women reaching their highest potential and also allowing them to create a fulfilling life of fulfillment, joy, and all the things that they truly desire. And I offer that to my clients through optimized and elevated systems, programs, and courses. Yes, the magnificence formula. And so that is who I am. That is what I hold the space for. And I'm so glad that you are here this evening so that we can have this awesome dialogue and we can get our savory tips. So before I introduce our phenomenal guest, let me tell you just a little bit about the Yummy Cafe. So the Yummy Cafe show is a show that I truly began to think about some time ago. And what I wanted was a space where I could actually celebrate women entrepreneurs. I have always had and taken a liking for women who truly went after what they wanted at no cost, even when the odds were against them. And you know, that's really difficult to do sometimes, right? When you're looking out the exterior and things that are happening in our internal world, it's crumbling. People, you know, marginalize you and they don't think you have what it takes to get to where you want to go. Listen, I've seen women say, not me and not today. And so as a young girl, I would flip through the magazine pages and I was so taken by the women and their stories of how they actually created these businesses and began to work for themselves. How did they actually go from an idea to an investment? How did they actually go from a, you know, their passion to profit? How did they do that? Their mission to monetizing that? How did they do it? And so when I read their stories and, and looked at what they were doing, I said, Deshaun, and I was young. I said, you can do that. Don't you want to do that too? And I said, yes, I do. And so as I began to grow and to see the wonderful, you know, women doing their 
things. My goodness, I was so inspired. I was so motivated to go ahead and to listen, not just think out of the box. I wanted to crush the box. That's what I wanted to do personally. And so at doing so, I want it as an adult, as an entrepreneur myself, I want to create that space where we actually celebrate women entrepreneurs. Because if you don't know, that path is not an easy path to always take. There is ups and downs and valleys and there is those barriers and detours and all that stuff, right, that gets in the way that wants to become our detour. But we have to, what, get back on track because there's nothing like having a life of fulfillment and joy. Now, I simply love being an entrepreneur. I do. It's amazing. And there are several reasons why I enjoy it. However, however, if I'm just being honest, and I am, I'm that girl, listen, there are a lot of pain points along the way. And those pain points was trying to take me out. I know I'm not the only one. Right. Let me know. Go ahead and put it in the chat. Right. Go ahead and put your comments there. I welcome you to do that. But those pain points were trying to take me out. I had this glamorous and luxury idea of being an entrepreneur. And the next thing I know, I had these hurdles and these barriers. And I said to myself, maybe this isn't for me. But I knew it was something that was in my heart. It was deep down in my soul. I was just that girl that had the entrepreneurial spirit. I was created that way. It was in my DNA, divinely, naturally appointed. So I kept going. I knew it was about the journey. And so I've created this space to highlight and celebrate other like-minded, phenomenal women entrepreneurs who've also had those hurdles that they had to overcome, but said, no, I am not going to give up. So that's what the Yummy Cafe is all about. It is your unlimited magnificence equals you and me. So without any further ado, let me introduce to you before I bring to the stage the phenomenal woman today. So Miss Ursula Mastine Bradley is the founder and CEO of Be Inspired Consultant and Coaching LLC and Be Inspired with Ursula Radio Show. Ooh, that's juicy already, right? The mission of the company is to teach organizations and individuals practical techniques and strategies in order to build and maintain a quality, balanced life. The vision is to educate, empower, and coach women to have a life of abundance. That's my kind of girl already. As an inspirational speaker, educational consultant, best-selling author, and certified life coach and mentor, Ursula's personal and professional goal is to inspire women to walk in their purpose. Oh, by manifesting their dreams, goals, and vision. Listen, I'm not bringing nobody, you know, here that doesn't have any value to give to you and I. Ursula coaches women in finding their God-given purpose. The women may have, as I said, some pain points that keep them in a place of comfort. Each delays their life purpose. One of her main strategies help women to identify their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats through the SWOT analysis approach. I'm very, very familiar with this approach, phenomenal approach. This coaching strategy allows women to work on their weaknesses and threats, which becomes an opportunity and strengths. Listen, this is a woman after my own heart. She is also an author and co-author of several books, which we're going to dive into. She is the creator and founder of the HELP movement, which provides life and coping skills, strategies, and techniques to millennials. She is also the founder and creator of the Facebook community, Life's Journey, with Ursula and is PREA trained to teach life skills, classes to women in prisons, and work release programs. Now, I don't know how she found the time to come and show up with us today, but I am so excited and delighted to bring to our stage this evening the phenomenal, the great Miss, yes, Coach 
Ursula Bradley. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, my sister, and hello, audience out there. I am so excited. You just had this thing going, going, going. <laughs> I'm already excited. Thank you so much, my Absolutely. sister, for having me at the Yummy Cafe. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, you are so welcome. I want to just ask this question. You know, women, you know, of great achievements and success as yourself, darling, get this question asked all the time. When do you sleep? Think about it. <laughs> Listen, my alarm goes off at 845 and it tells me to be in the bed at nine. <laughs> okay. So, you know that when you have a passion for something, Coach, yes. and when yes. you love what you do, you don't get tired from it. No. You know, we make it happen because we are serving our people and we're working for the kingdom. That's what it's all about. That's Ooh. what it's about. Yes. That's what it's about. Yes. I am so happy to have you and I Thank love you. everything that you are doing and where you're moving and growing. We're going to jump right in, right? Because I know that they're listening. We have some people that are watching. Thank you for uh, listeners and, and those that are viewing the, the show this evening with us. You all can at any time put your comments there for us to read and to respond to you. This is a dialogue, right, Coach Ursula? This is a dialogue, you know, and we want to be able to be of service at all times so that those that are thinking about what they want to do, those that want to birth in from their belly, the desires of their heart, we want them to be able to take the nuggets, right? To be able to take away all of the goodness that we have to offer and that my yeah. guests have the offer so that you don't have to fight so hard they don't have to fight so hard right, right exactly <laughs> yes. so so listen we're gonna jump right in i'm so again glad that you're here with me i'm just bubbling over with enthusiasm so i always ask the guests the phenomenal women entrepreneurs questions that really create their story, that really create their journey and how they came to where they are today and what that looks like. And so we're going to jump right in. The first question that I love to ask is, what was your inception moment, right? When did you know that it was what you wanted to do, that this was what you wanted to create for yourself? When did you really know that? Again, you know, what was your inception moment? All right, my inception moment. Now that's a great question because that makes me think about and I just want to go back a little bit. When I first started my business, actually 22 years ago, I was working with youth and teen, but God kept pushing me over to the women. So I started working with women that came from Tutwiler Prison. Yeah. And these women were in work release programs, women mm -hmm. that were actually in drug recovery programs. And when I was there with those women, Coach Deshaun and my audience, mm -hmm. I noticed these women that were sitting in these programs. I knew these women were going through something beyond where they were. I could see the hurt. I could see the pain within them. And I talk mm -hmm. about the canvas because the canvas is that actual temple, which means that even though there were no outer scars, I can see the scars there. Yes, I can see the cracks there. I can see the discoloration on their canvas. These women were actually crying for help. These mm -hmm. women had so many pain points. They yes. didn't know basic coping skills, how to cope in the world. So I knew right then it was time for me to continue to say, look, Ursula, it is time for you to make those women your avatar go forth and work with those women and help those women because guess what we all have had those moments we yes. all have had pain points and it was time for me to step forward to do that so i knew that i was at the crowning stage but it was time for me to birth and that's what i did you know, I love hearing that I, too, worked with women in shelters, you know, some years ago. And that was a beginning for me to really see that in that community, in that demographic, right, Coach, that there was such a need. Yes. And so as you were pouring into the women, what did you see that they needed the most? I saw that these women just needed an ear. These women just needed someone to not fear them, 
they yeah. needed someone that wanted to talk to them <laughs> and someone that wanted to listen. Mm-hmm. Because when you see women sit there and they're like at a tunnel vision of you, and they're watching and they're listening to you and tears are dropping, you know, that's really something that when you're in those facilities, you can't show the emotions. Right. You've got to be hardcore here. You can't call mm-hmm. names. You have to call yes. their numbers on their shirts. <laughs> so you have a role, a position you have to play being there. Mm-hmm. But I knew deep down inside, these women were crying out for help. Yes. They didn't just need to be getting help from the facility. They needed help from other people as well. Not someone just to come in and talk to them, but to coach them, to give them the tools that they need to go out in the world and be productive citizens and to walk in their purpose. Yes. So did you know that you had the tools to create what would now be the coaching business at that time? Did you know what you were going to do? <laughs> right? Yes. I was like, oh, at that time, I didn't know. But you know how God keeps coming back to you and he keeps tapping you and yes. you have something stirring in your spirit. Mm-hmm. That's when I knew it was time. Mm-hmm. So I said, Ursula, it is time to take that leap. It's time. Oh, I love leap. Now, you know, you know, that's my that's that's my theme. That's my theme for the year. Leap, letting everything appear possible. So you said you knew that was the inception moment. Mm-hmm. Yes. What did you actually then begin to create? to expand your territory. So what I did, you all, I went and got me a coach because as coaches, we have coaches. Let me tell you something. I got my coach. We worked on my programs. Mm -hmm. I focused and I had to determine who was my avatar, who I was going to serve. And it was those women. I had my age group and it was women that were broken, women that had those pain points. All the time, everything was flowing for me. I didn't Mm -hmm. even know it. It was already flowing that way. So once I got my coach and we started putting things out, planning things, it was there. It was already done. I just had to get in place and position myself and make it happen. I love that. I love that. I want to take a moment to just, hello, Miss Tracy. She's saying hello to us. I just want to, Miss Sister Tracy Starworth Ricks. Hello, Pastor. How are you doing? So glad you're in the building with us. Good to see. She's also a coach. She's also a woman on the move, honey. And she she just took time. We appreciate your time to join us this evening. So I'm going to get back. So, okay. I just wanted to make sure I said hello. So, so, Coach Ursula, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. It was already there, right? Isn't that amazing what God does? Oh, I was yeah. already there. Mm-hmm. Already right? there. Right. So, you've had, and you had at the time, right? You had your early years as a, as a, as a guidance counselor. Mm-hmm. Did any of that play into your inception moment of... Did you rely on, you know, your education, your training, your skill set as a guidance counselor? Did you think about that being, you know, wrapped into now this next level of your serving? It really wasn't. I think my Mm. life journey itself is actually what prepared me for all this. Let's talk about that. Share that. Share that. So when we talk about my life's journey, that's my Facebook community because I realized that I was on a journey at my life at one time, didn't know that's what it was all about, which means that I had to be a caregiver to my father with stage four leukemia. Mm. And once he passed a year later, my mother actually got breast cancer. So I had to take care of my parents and that taught me about the journey of life, which means that it opened my eyes to so many different things, so many different things. So that's how my focus became a little bit more clear for me. That's how I moved out of that comfort zone. That's how the fear that I Mm -hmm. may have had with me, I didn't even know this, actually allowed me to say, you know what, Ursula, you're walking in your purpose already. And I didn't even know it. (laughs) You knew it. (laughs) Yeah. Listen, and you know, I I call that a a setup by God, right? Someone else I know calls it a drive-by. And I believe, actually, sister who was with us watching, Miss Tracy Starworth Frick says, years ago, I don't know if she remembers, she called it a Holy Ghost setup. Oh, 
Oh my. <laughs> and I've taken that, right? It's a Holy Ghost setup. And I love how, you know, you, you, you spoke to life experiences because that truly is the value in how we offer our coaching programs and our That's services, right? right? That is such a value that it really is our own. It's time tested. I say that, you know, it's time tested. It's the truth of who we were and, and, and who we are and how that shaped us. And even in my magnificence formula, that's exactly what has happened. The things that I, you know, went through and 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 and, and was able to overcome, and as I put my skill set, yes, but it was all about the experiences, that hands-on, exactly. and so it, it really is about relating to the to your demographic, to your ideal client, and I love that story of how you knew that it was as a result of you know, the women in that community and that you had a heart for them and that you saw here is where there's a need. Yes. That inception moment is where is there a need and how can you be the solution? Yes. I love that. I love that. Exactly. Yeah. And so as a result, you said you knew that that was your, your purpose. Now mm-hmm. let's go to this next question, right? Because we're in purpose. Purpose is great. But honey, as purpose comes and it flows, we then have some of those breakdowns. We have those hurdle moments. And, you know, for me, when I had my hurdle moments as a a young woman in business, and so my first business was my production company, uh, Oasis Ministry Productions. And so when I started, you know, Oasis Ministry Productions, I didn't start it because I said, I'm going to write plays and I want to do that. God told me this is your ministry. And so Oasis Ministry Productions is my production company and it is true to life experiences, but it's Christian based. It is spiritually based, you know, stories about real life and how do we overcome those? Well, I produced and directed, you know, my first shows, my first musical, and I had all of these awesome expectations. Coach Ursula, I was going to thrive because God told me to do this, right? And, you know, so it was it was good. I, you know, I had favor with, you know, where I was going to actually put the productions up and uh, with the person who owned the theater, at favor there with, you know, the, the pricing, the, the rental fees, and it was just great. But I was still, you know, very new to all of this. And although I had the training, I have my degrees in theater, you know, I, it was new producing your own show. And I expected, OK, I listened to God. Now it's going to take off. I'm going to get some investors. We're going to go, you know, and be global. I'm going to do some some touring. Well, that didn't happen for me. Mm-hmm. And so. I was upset and hurt and disappointed and I felt embarrassed and shameful. Like, God, what happened? Where did you go? I did. And that was a hurdle for me. So you know what I did? I hid. I became invisible because it didn't show up for me the way that I expected. And I didn't know at the time that was going to be the life lesson. I didn't know to just keep moving. So that hurdle, and there were many others, really made me feel unsupported and question, was I moving in the direction of wanting to serve people and bring a message? Was I doing the right thing? So what was it for you that were some hurdles that, you know, you had to readjust to ask yourself, okay, wait a second, is this happening? And how do I move forward with that? How did that show up for you? Well, my hurdles were, it went back to me being the caregiver for my parents. Okay. That really taught so much to me. And that was a big one for Mm. me because at the time, my focus was there. My focus was there. So I didn't know that I was going to actually step out into this world, what God wanted me to do. I always knew that I was taking care of someone, taking care of someone, not focusing on what Ursula wanted to do. But I had to realize it was not about me at that moment at that moment so Mm -hmm. what i had to realize is that i had to stay in prayer real hard really hard to stay in prayer so that hurdle moment was just actually going through that but that's what built me that built me to be that strong woman to say you know what i am going to step out here i'm going to step out here i did not have a clue that i was going to do that but that showed me when my father would be watching him take his last breaths not knowing it 
it showed me, Coach Deshaun, my audience, how important life is. Yes. And how we don't need yes. to say, oh, I'm going to put this off. Oh, I'm going to wait. No, we don't need to do that. And I always tell people, mm -hmm. I do not do anything unless it's purposeful. I don't just jump up and yes. do things. Yes, yes. I don't jump up and do things. So that was my hurdle moment. Mm. And that's a big part of my story itself, that experience of my life, which is still there pushing me to the day. That's good. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. So I'm going to just dive a little deeper in this moment, right? Of the hurdle moment. Mm -hmm. Did you, t how did you apply what you learned during that moment? And, you know, um, as a result of having experienced that, how did you apply that to some of your techniques and your teachings? What I did, the first thing I did, never being an author, I became a co-author in an anthology. And the book was titled, Madam President, How to Think and Act Like a Leader. It was about leadership. So my actual chapter was actually um, leadership begins at home. So I started in the book. So that helped me put my actual, a little bit of my story in the book itself. Then that became to a part to be my teaching and storytelling. That's actually what it turned out to be my storytelling when I'm talking to women, yes, letting them yes. know you're not the only person going through these things. We all go through things, but this is how I handle it. This is what I did to get me over this hurdle or this hump. So it started with being in that first anthology and that book right there, being that storyteller of sharing my journey. Oh my, I love that. That was birthed from that. How, how did the book concept, how did that, how did that happen? How did that come into your life? What was the backstory for that? Share that. Just saw a post on Facebook, mm -hmm. saw a post on Facebook from this professional women's organization owned by Ms. Linda Eastman. I called the number one morning going to work at 630 and I let it run for a little while, you all. And then I hung up. Fear stepped in. Fear step yes. in on yes. the freeway <laughs> it does it does it yes in. so when i got on down i'm gonna call i left a message and you all she called me back and she asked for me to pitch my story so i did and she said i need this she said i need this in here and yes it's amazing of the women of the 14 women that i was called you know actually writing this with and it was so amazing god showed me he said leadership begins at home and i talked yes. about how i saw the role from my mother how she taught mm. me so many things as being that leader as that woman which helped me get through those hurdles on down the road which i didn't even know that god had that plan all the time he had that plan all the yes time. yes he knows my sister used to say may she rest in peace she used to always say, you know, God sees your, 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 your beginning, you know, and your ending. He knows where you're going to shine at all times, at all times. Right. Yeah. I want to dive a little bit more into the, into these, your, 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 your authoring of these books. They're just awesome. phenomenal. Right. The forgiving father. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that, 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 that book. Yes. Now, that book was actually written after my father passed because I tell people the title is a twist because I had to talk about the relationship with my father and I. As I tell people, nothing negative, nothing bad, but I had to bring my father in my home, my husband and I, and take care of him because mm -hmm. my father wasn't in our lives later in the last years of our life, but I ended up being his caregiver okay. and taking care of him. Yes. So, not only sharing my story about that, I also was talking to parents how important it was for us to not look at our problems we have as parents when we have children. It is about the child. We need to make sure that we're not putting the children in the center. We need to make sure of that. So that's, that's right. where that book came out of because I was nice. so blessed my mother didn't do that to us. Mm. We only heard and saw positive things. So what did I do? I only was able to show a positive aurora and that image and that love to my father. Wow. So that's what Forgiving Father is all about. Yes. 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 You know, I love hearing you be honest and really vulnerable with your gift. 
That's how you are relating to others and, and really exactly. holding a space for healing, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly. how we hold a space for healing. When people look at others and say, oh my goodness, they've accomplished you know so much, I can't relate to them because they didn't go through anything. But when we say, this is what we went through because we're yeah. humans, right? Then those that we are holding that space for healing relate. And there it's not so far fetched that, you know, all of us really have been given the same playing field, right? Yeah. Yeah. We all have. It's just, what are we going to do with it? How do we really show up for that? And I love when you said earlier, you got a coach. Oh, I love that. Uh, that's so important. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's so important. I want to go into the, you co-authored uh, 40 plus and phenomenal audio. Yes. There's yes. just so much. I, I want you to just give us all these nuggets here because oh, awesome. you, you have written, you know, and co-authored just, you know, a vast, you know, um, a vast majority of, of your life here. How how did that happen? And how are they all showing up in, in these different forms of, of, of you authoring? Well, you know, 40 Plus and Phenomenal is actually was co-authored by Miss Stevie, Dr. Stevie Bills. We all know her out there in the spotlight. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she was turning 40 and she wanted to do an audio about wisdom. So I was like, let's get on that. And my title was Wisdom from the Heart. And I spoke about four different words, about words that actually bring wisdom, like hope and peace and love. And that's what I talked about, because I wanted people to understand that teachable moments. Yeah. That's what I, I would just share it with you all, that hurdle, those pain points. That's those it. Those become teachable moments, yes, which they turns do. to what? Wisdom. Mm. It turns to wisdom. Mm. So we learn from that. So that was my title in that audio, Wisdom from the Heart. And all the ladies had their aspect of speaking about wisdom. Because you know what? It turns to that. If it don't, it sure does. It sure does. It is. It doesn't just happen because we go to sleep and we wake up and then, you know, oh, here's my epiphany. Here's where I'm moving towards. This is what it's the experiences. And I, I wanted to dive a little deeper here because you, you saw fit to be obedient even when you saw someone else's project, you knew that your calling was to allow yourself to be a part of that, to further your platform, not in a selfish way, but we're talking about holding a space for healing. Exactly. And so, yeah, and I love how you said, you know, I one of the ways that we can overcome our hurdles is being resourceful. Exactly. Right. How can we be resourceful? What do we have to offer? What do I have in my bag of, you know, of resourceful tricks or tools or strategies? Who do I know? What's out there? We, we tend to wait and want to want someone to knock at the door and say, OK, Deshaun, listen, I think you in this house, you got some great things that you some tools and some stuff. Come on over here. No. Where are we looking? How are we showing up for ourselves? And so I'm hearing that you are talking about how you showed up for yourself so that you wouldn't just be selfish with the wisdom exactly. selfish with the forgiveness right exactly. selfish with the with the being hopeful that you wanted to show that and so you wrote that you spoke about that and it became your stories yes ma'am i love that yes. i love that do you share some of this i'm sure you do but i'm just wanting to hear it for our our listeners do you share a lot of this on your own radio show I do. And I'm starting to do more and more of that. I have more and more authors coming on and I always tell them, I do not actually go out there and say, do anything that I haven't done. So I'm not going to yeah. share anything with you that I haven't experienced. So <laughs> that's what Be Inspired with Ursula Radio Show is all about. I want women to understand they're not alone. They yeah. are not alone. Guess yeah. what? I've been through things and I said, mm. guess what? I'm having a faith test now. We all have those faith tests and yeah. it's okay because it's okay. life. That's yeah. Life. Yes. That's life. What has been some of your remarkable rewards as a result of your radio show and the women that you are? Yeah. What has been some of those remarkable rewards? Oh, it's just been such a blessing. I never thought I would have a radio show, Coach Deshaun. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and I was on the show and it's phenomenal. You were phenomenal. Never thought about it. That was mm. God again. He said, Ursula, do it. Obedience. That's what yes. I had to be. 
it has been so amazing because of who we're reaching. Mm. I look at who we're reaching out there every week, and that's what it's about. And the topics that the ladies bring are amazing to help other women. And when I'm actually speaking with these ladies, mm -hmm. we go deep. And I'm like, it. wow, yes. it's amazing yes. what God places in so many women. And it's amazing who he puts in your circle. That's so right. I have so many new sisters just like you. I said, yes. once you're connected with me, you're stuck with me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yes. this show has been phenomenal for mm. me to continue to let the women out there in all the different countries that we're in, 170 countries, understand that That's right. you can do it. You're not alone. You're worthy. And you have purpose. You oh, my goodness. Yes. Listen. Coach Ursula, if you don't stop being in my notes over here, you didn't <laughs> went right into the next question, the next segment. She didn't went right into it. She didn't went right into it. She said, worthy. What was your worthy moment? When, and I love, I love all the questions. This is one of my favorites because we tend to, as a result of not, here's what I know for sure before I go any further. And, and listeners, we're so grateful that you're here. This is what I know for sure. Mm -hmm. We all want certainty, don't we? So when we're not certain, we don't we're 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 not sure how to move and when to move. And so coming out of those hurdles, you have to realize that you're worthy to move forward and to keep the momentum, being consistent. For you, how did your worthy moment show up? And what I mean by worthy, worthy is when did you know that your life was worth you literally living your dream? Being, as you said, obedient. Obedience is better what than sacrifice, right? It's better to obey than to sacrifice. When did you know that your worthy moment was going to outweigh the fears, the pains, the detours, the uncertainty of it all. How did that show up for you? It showed up for me where I did not feel that I was just doing something. It hmm. was a hobby. It was something that I loved. What was stirring within me was overflowing. I wake up thinking about it. Yes. I look forward to working with people. I look forward yes. to talking to my clients. So I know that those moments are worthy because I'm serving. Yes. I'm serving. I'm helping mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. That shows that word itself being worthy. It's because God is using me to help my sisters. Yes, he is using me. So yes. life, life itself. And that is so important. I tell people, mm -hmm. as long as we are inhaling and exhaling, yes. that's something to be worthy. It's worthy, you all. So I know serving my sisters and enjoying what I'm doing and seeing the results. And then the women coming back and sharing how I help them. I tell them, I say, it's not, it wasn't all me now. Right. Let them know right. it wasn't right. me. So yeah. let's, let's rephrase that. You know, God used me. So that's my worthy moments. I have many, many, as you yes. said, but it's all about life and serving my sisters. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I totally am just going to, you know, ditto that. It is about supporting and serving. Yes. Uh, one thing that, I, that I'm hearing you say, and I just want to highlight it, is you know it's your worthy moment when you can't get enough of it when you breathe it, right? Yeah, when yeah. you feel it in every part of your being, it's what exactly. you see, it's what you hear, it's what you taste, it's what you yeah. smell, it's what you feel, and it's fulfillment. And you'll do it, of course, we want to make a living, a wealthy living from it, but we'll do it for free. And it's the fulfillment of seeing how it's given back to you and being worthy of even being called to serve in that place. I call myself often a midwife for my clients, right? Because a lot of women that you and I work with and we serve and those that are listening as well, who are coaches or, you know, who work with women in any capacity, you may, you know, be a practitioner, an educator, a teacher, a facilitator, right? A speaker. And when we're working with those and we're of service, one thing that I know is that we're giving, but we're also receiving. 
Exactly. When we see ourselves as the midwife or the conduit, right? We're the vessels being used to channel yes. that space of healing, of, of transformation. And exactly. that's so empowering, right? For us to be able to do that. And when we're doing it, because a lot of the women, let me ask you this. A lot of the women that I know that I coach and I work with, they're in and they have a great deal of success. Right. You're, you're, they, they've come already have accomplished some things and great things. But most of us, including myself, we seem to be in this place where we're at a crossroads. Oh, yes. And we're thinking of the next step in our next level living. We're thinking of that next step in our next level to our business, to our families, to our relationships, to our love life, to our health and fitness and well-being. But we just don't know what and how to maybe accomplish that. Right. So they're in a crossroads. And so through the work that I'm hearing that you do of your, you know, knowing that it's worth everything you're being, you've stepped in to bridge that gap. Exactly. And that's what we do, Coach Sean. That is exactly what we do. I tell the people we're coaches. You have the tools already. We're here to coach that's it. you. That's it. We're that's it. Yes. We're counseling. We're not being therapists. We're here to coach you. So when you tell them that, oh, they boast up more than I'm like, you got this. You got, you this. got this. Right. You're just here to guide you and coach you. <laughs> and it's amazing. So we love it. It is amazing. It is so amazing. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, in coaching, there's the do it yourself coaching. There's a do it with your, you know, your, your coach. And then there you can combine those, right. Or do it on your own, but in a hybrid type type of coaching that we do. Yeah. We offer to our, our clients that we're coaching you, but you show up already. So there are some of that, this work that you're going to do on your own. We're holding you accountable, right? We're holding you accountable. And so we're talking about being worthy. Those of you that are listening, if you're looking at the replay and you put a comment, please put hashtag replay so that I know that you watched us and it was on the replay, but you can always put your comments, always put your questions. I'll get back to you. And that's a promise. And so those of you that are watching, you know, when you're thinking about, you know, moving forward over the hurdles. And then when you realize this is, I'm worthy enough to pursue this, I'm going to give birth to this dream. You got to put a birth date on your dreams, yes. on your oh, visions, yes. right? And if you don't, it's just something, it's just, you know, in your head. And I call it, it's in theory. And you don't want it to be in theory. You really want it to be in practical living. I say this all the time. And I love saying this. I say, listen, we got to move, get your luggage, pack up everything and move from theory street. Oh, you want it. to, you want it. to move to practical living street I love it. where yes. we are actualizing everything that we desire and we are consistent and we are creating and more. See, listen, here's what success is. Success is your ability to continue to create. That's success. If I can continue to create every single day, if you said it, when there's breath in me, right, I can get up and begin again and I can create that that platform is is powerful. We wake up every day. You said this word earlier. You said canvas. Mm -hmm. We wake up every day with a clear canvas, right, that we can create every single moment of our being. That's success. That's the fulfillment of it all. It's like, wow, how can I create larger, bigger, stronger? How can I expand my territory? How can I be a part of what I call the mastery of contribution? Yes. I want to yes. contribute. Exactly. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I love that you have allowed your life, your living, to not just be for yourself, even in the losses that you've had. Mm -hmm. 
that you've said, no, I'm going to move this around, right? I'm going to overcome this. So we talked about the inception moment. Those of you that are with us, we talked about the hurdle moments, right? And the worthy moment. When did you know that? And when do you know? So if you're thinking about Deshaun, Coach Ursula, mm, when do I know? It really is a moment when you feel that you cannot live without doing something. Would you would you agree with that, coach? Would you agree with that? I agree. It is. It is. Oh, you feel it. You know. You know it, right? It's like even trying to do something else, you get pulled back in that direction. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) And you start creating radio shows you start writing and co-authoring books right you start Mm -hmm. speaking as yourself and you're going okay i'm really doing my purpose most definitely yeah and so if you're listening and you want to be clear on what your purpose is sit down and i just want to offer you those that are listening and looking at the replay ask yourself who am i Mm -hmm. what is my message and why am i doing this who am i Who are you? What is your message? And what are you doing? Why are you doing this? If you can really understand those three questions to gain clarity, then you're on the right track. You're on the right track, right? So as we bring it to our next movement, I always have my awesome, phenomenal women entrepreneurs to give me what their three words are. And I call them your three journey words. What were your three journey words that got you to where you are now? And those words can change as we do. We change. But Coach Ursula said, you tell them. Courage, positioning, and completion. Yes. (sighs) Okay. Mm -hmm. So now she's going to break each one down and tell us how have they created this story. We are listening. (laughs) Yes. I am in my office here and my whiteboard behind me has these words on them. Mm -hmm. Because I have reminders all around me. That's important. Courage. For those that follow me, you know I am big on talking about comfort and courage. I tell everyone in my era, growing up in the home, we never talked about anything as it relates to courage. We talked about the comfort zone. We talked about you must be comfortable. You must go to high school, graduate high school, go to college get a job yeah and that's it and i guess yeah. what glow the glory you know yeah. so, <laughs> yeah. you're right you're right so you're right. that was there so mm. you only sat there because that's what you heard from big mama madia mom yeah. that's what you heard that's right but i knew growing up you all and i know this is for you as well coach Deshaun and the listeners that yeah. there was something else within you you mm. knew there was something else that you wanted to do yes. so that's when you Say it to yourself, and this is what I said to myself. I've got to move out of this zone here that's called comfort. Mm-hmm. So that meant I no longer had fear. Mm. No longer had fear in mm. my life, which mm. means that I gained some courage and said, you know what? I'm going forth and I am going to step forward. And it's not that I was going to make things happen. God told me, Ursula, I'm with you all the way. Let's go for it. And yes. that's what I did. So that's why courage is a big part of my life. I do not have fear to test or try anything because I don't jump out on things before I go and pray about them. He has to. He, Mm -hmm. God, has to tell me when it's time to leap and take charge of that. That's where my courage, and that's why I love talking about courage. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Okay, I'm yes. listening. Okay. okay. You ready for my next word? Yes. Yes. Listen, we mm-hmm. listen, listen, Coach Ursula. Okay. We have our saucer and we have our cups and we are ready for the yummy success <laughs> tips. So keep going, honey. Yes. Keep going. Keep, keep going. going. You won't overflow. Yes. Yes. So positioning. I always tell people, we as individuals, we must position ourselves. Mm-hmm. See, when I mentioned that I don't just jump into anything, I don't because If I just keep jumping into something, guess what? The next word is never going to happen in my life. So when I think about positioning myself, I think about people that are running a race. I love to watch the Olympics when they run. 
See, back when I was young, I loved to watch this runner. Her name was Flojo. Yes. For those yes, that remember yes, her, yes. she had those long nails. Yes, and yes. Beautiful. I yes. about this when I was older. I would always watch her. And not all I knew is that she could run fast. That's all mm -hmm. I knew. Mm -hmm. But as I became older and realized how I had to position myself for some things and things that I learned being a coach, I said, you know what? That's not what she did. Right. She kept focus. There were strategies put yes. in place mm -hmm. as it relates to that. So I remember people being on that field when they're running. They're only looking forward. They're not looking yes. around at everybody else. That's they're right. focused. Mm -hmm. They are focused. It's like a tunnel vision because they know where they're going. And then what do they do? They get in position. They mm. get their bodies in position. Mm. And the person that's ahead is also a position because they're waiting on the baton. See, what we must understand is that we're getting ourselves in position. Yes, we want to pass something to someone else. We don't want to hold it always. Right. We want to pass it to someone yes. else. So yes. I know when it's time for me to do something because I'm always keeping myself in position. And that is by staying in God's word. I'm always praying mm -hmm. and I'm always mm -hmm. listening. See, I don't like a lot of noise because when there's a lot of noise, I can't hear what he's telling me. That's right. He's talking to me. So I'm always trying to keep myself in position because when it's time for you to move, you're ready. Yes. You're ready. And when you say yes. go, you know, yeah. you're going to say, okay. Yes. That's what we have to do. So that's why I'm particular about saying positioning ourselves. Mm -hmm. We must always be ready. So we go forth into something. We feel good about it. It tastes yes. good. Tell people it's like you fixing a plate of food. You know, chefs, they put the food on the plate. And what they do, they wipe the corners because... Come on now. Come on, come on, come on. But we don't only look at the presentation, you all. What we want it to do. We want it to taste good. Yes. Right? So we don't only want the position and say, oh, yes, I'm in position to do this. Come on now. We need to make sure that whatever we do while we're coming out of position, be tasteful as well. That's important. That's important. That is so important. So if I get up and leave the room and just run around the block, you all wait for me to come back. I may just get up and start running around because, you know, I, I, I'm trying to stay seated here. I'm trying to keep my, you know, composure. But this is some good stuff. This is yummy, yummy. Okay, I'm listening. Come on. This is good yes, stuff. Right. Okay. Now, now when we're in position, because we now know what we need to do to get a position, that's when completion comes, you all. See, I tell a person, this is why I coach and talk about procrastination. Habits, the gaps, mm -hmm. the links, missing links. I talk about those things. I think we're going in and out. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? I can. Me? I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Keep going. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm going to go back. This is why I talk about you all when I'm doing, okay, when I'm doing completion, that's why I coach and talk about procrastination. I'm going to say this again. I talk mm -hmm. about habits. I talk about the gaps. I talk about the needs missing links because all of that when that occurs in our lives we never get anything completed mm -hmm. i tell people i don't like to start things and it don't complete that's i want to make sure when i'm working on something completion takes place that's when i position myself the right way mm. that's when what i'm doing is purposeful see i tell people i'm not going to work on things that are not purposeful why am i going to waste my time with that that's Who's right going to help who is it for right. who am i serving it must be purposeful. So completion is on my board as well because I want to make sure wow. when I'm working on something, when mm. I'm helping someone, when I'm coaching someone, when I'm working with my ministry, that we're going to complete it because that's what God wants us to do. He did not put us here, as I always say, to take up space. That's we are right. here on a mission and we're here to make things happen, but we must complete things. We don't need to keep starting over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? That's when you're back in the comfort stage, you all. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. So those are my three words. You know what? That was so powerful. My goodness. I am just... Uh, 
I, I, I'm in my moment. I'm taking it in as I know our listeners are. Coach Ursula, that was a phenomenal teaching moment, teachable story. Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. If Listen, I got it. I get it. Even it resonates with me, that completion part. Oh my goodness. I heard that just recently. God said, Deshaun, you have to complete things. And he was taking me back over my life where I had dropped the ball a few times, right? Like I said earlier, because something didn't show up for me the way that I expected it. So then what do I do? I pull myself out of the game. I love courage, positioning, completion. My goodness. This is so yummy. I, listen, I'm not bringing anyone to this discussion room, to the platform, to the stage that's not going to drop the knowledge and the nuggets because we are here. Those of you who are with us and watching the replay, this space, this platform is for you. And when you get it, go and share it with others because that's what we're in the business of, right? Serving and supporting so that we leave the legacy. We want to touch those that we can't even see that lives we're touching. And Coach Ursula, you have just dropped the the, the the nuggets, the wisdom that are just life fulfilling. And I thank you so very much for that awesome story. So let me ask you this. What rules do you live by? What are your pillars of strength? What has kept you moving forward as, you know, your rule to live? You said some of them. And if you want to say those or something new and fresh, we're listening. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you all, I know many of you all live by this as well. My pillars are my faith, mm -hmm. having hope, peace, and purpose. We must have it. Yes. It's so important. Yes. Without faith, what can we do? Without yes. Faith, we must have it. How are we going to live? We must be hopeful, you all. That's yes. so important. I know many people sometimes lose hope, but I'm mm -hmm. here to tell you that you can regain it again. Oh, yes, you can. Just yes, trust. Can. Just trust him. You yes. can. And who does not want to live in peace? Oh, my God. When you find <laughs> peace, you'll be surprised how you're smiling and not even know it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's amazing right. What it That's amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, things can come in your face, <laughs> and it doesn't even matter what's coming there anymore because it doesn't bother you anymore because you've gained peace and purpose you know your purpose in life so through it all it's okay yes it's okay yes nice rule to live by love pillars of strength i love those so before we release you and the audience of course we want them to know how to get in contact with you before you do that are there any up and coming events that you're having and how can they listen to first and foremost your radio show any discounts or services that you're offering what would you like to share with the audience yes thank you so much once again coach Deshaun, for having you're me so I'm welcome. A ball on the young cafe well, yes. my audience, thank you all as well. And I just want to let you all know that the Be Inspired with Ursula radio show actually comes on Tuesday nights at mm -hmm. 7 o'clock Central and 8 Eastern. Yes, I would love to have you as a guest. I would love you. You can go to EnvisionedBroadcasting.com. That's the radio network. And you can listen to all of the broadcasts. Uh oh. Yes. I don't know why this okay, is doing we're that. Back in. Once yes. again, you can go to envisionedbroadcasting.com. Are we back on? I think so. Yes, we can hear you. You're fine. Go ahead. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. And you can listen to all of the other women's shows. You can go in and download the podcast mm -hmm. and listen to my other guests. But I would love for some women to come forth to be a guest. So you can contact me on the inspired radio show at gmail.com. Send me a message. I would love to have you to be on the show because as I tell women, this is not about me. It's about my guests as well as the audience. So that's that. Also, I am having my women's conference last year. COVID kept it behind. The I am women's conference 2021 will be here in Birmingham, Alabama on Saturday, September the 25th. This nice. is a conference, yes, where we get together, sisters, we have 
empowerment. We have unity. We have love. It's all about that. We have speakers. We have, of course, food. We have those, the type of music. Last time I had a violinist. This time I'll have a flutist. We're there to have transformation. I tell the women when they come in that door, I want them to feel relieved when That's they walk right. in right. that door. So that yes. conference is actually coming up, as well as I have a new book coming out that I'm an actual co-author in, Ascend. So that is coming in. It's actually published. So we're taking pre-orders on that as well. My off, my actual um, coach is the actual visionary author for that. So those are the things that I'm doing. And God has placed some more things on my heart as well. But those are things that are actually in position and completed, you all. <laughs> As I said earlier, when does she sleep? I don't know. I don't know. But we're also going, you can follow her here on Facebook, right? At yeah. Ursula Mason, uh, uh, Mason Bradley. Okay. And then also we have your Instagram, UAM Bradley. And then you're also on LinkedIn at Ursula Mason Bradley. And then your business contact. We want to make sure that everyone is available. So everything that she said to you, if you have a question, here's the number. It is 1-800-599-7199. Again, that number is 1-800-599-7199. And you can contact her on all of her social media platforms. And as she gave you the information for her awesome, awesome radio show program, I was a part of that as a guest. It was phenomenal. Listen, I don't want to let you go. But I know we, we've been here and uh, we've done a great hour of our show. I am so delighted that our paths have crossed, yes. that we are sisters in yes. the game, in the marketplace of inspiring others to reach their highest potential. We are in this together so that everyone is living in their abundant life that God has yes. created us to live in. And it has been my honor to sit here, to listen and to absorb and to take in every single one of your nuggets, your diamonds for my destiny. I am your pearls of wisdom. I am just a Static and enthused by everything you have given us today. And I'm so honored that you took time out of all of your busy schedule to come here and allow us to taste from your plate, honey. You have given us yummy, savory success tips. And I know that everyone has enjoyed it. Listen, if you're watching, if you didn't get a chance to watch us live or you're just coming in, watch the replay. Watch the replay. And please give your comments. Give your questions. I will come back and look at the questions. I promise you that I will and answer them. If you have any questions for Coach Ursula, you're not able to get connected with her, but here's the number. Let me know. We will make that connection for you. And as in closing, I just want to say, it's always a pleasure to be able to sit and support others because it is our goal that you are living life magnified and that you are truly reaching your highest potential. We live in a fallen world, but it doesn't mean that we have to be fallen, right? It doesn't mean that we can always begin again. And I'm always so grateful to be able to support and serve. And do you have any closing comments or words you like to say, Coach Ursula? Well, I just want to thank you, my sister, Coach Sean, for having me. This was so awesome. I've had a wonderful time. Thank you guests so much for coming in. And I just want to encourage everyone to mm -hmm. just step forward, you all. Get in position. Let's get in yes. position. As Coach yes. Sean said, we're here for you. Get in position because it is now time to complete those things in your life that God has planted there for you. That's right. That's right. So with that, we are going to say thank you, everyone. We wish you well until the next time, which is next month when I bring on another phenomenal woman entrepreneur. We want you to always remember that you can begin again and that I want you to always live life magnified. And I will see you on the other side of magnificence. Until later. Smooches, as I always say, and deuces. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us.